Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm gonna continue a ninja trick that I did half a year ago actually and I've got a lot of response on that video and it has to do with a desktop PC and how you can get more out of your processor in that and we're gonna see how you can actually get a pretty decent desktop PC even though it's an old beast or piece of crap you uh, you decide let's let's go to the table and see what I got this is a regular HP desktop machine and it's born with a Intel Core 2 processor and this one is meant for Windows 7 so everything is good we are throwing these out in the minis right now because they have become too slow for what we're using them for. We can see that this processor, where is my finger? There, here, it's the E8400 and that's a 3 GHz dual core processor. And that's a bit too slow, but faster processors are available and I've gotten some of those. Here is my old list of processors that I've tested in a system much like the computer over here, the 6300, the E6550, the E66, E67, E84, which is the same one as is in the computer right now, and an E5500. And these are all dual core processors, but you can also get quad core processors for this. And we did this Q6600, and that one is really awesome because with a little bit of tape, you can overclock this. And that is very important because a machine like this is not overclockable. There is no settings in BIOS where you can go in and tell it to overclock whatever. It uh, sniffs out the CPU and it, and it chooses the clock frequency that this CPU is meant to run. So the normal thing for a PC or desktop PC like this is that it's not cloggable. You can't overclock it. It runs as fast as it is meant to run, right? But we have a little trick that, um, that does that. When I did this test, I didn't know enough about all of these. And later I found out that all these processors up here, front side boss of them are 1.333 gigahertz, all of them. I think, uh, yeah, I think there were all that frequency, except this one. This one was meant to run 1066 megahertz. And when we did the little ninja trick, we kicked it up to 1.33 gigahertz. Like we uh, raised the frequency with about 300 megahertz. And that was a big deal in performance wise. This um, processor was benchmarking at about 3,333 and it was kicked up to about 4,113, which percentage-wise is really great. So I looked into this and I found, um, let's put it over here, this cheat of different processors that can do that trick. They are supposed to be running 1.66 gigahertz on the front side bus. But when you do this ninja trick that I'm going to show you again in just a little bit, you kick up the front side bus to 1.333 gigahertz. So you get more speed out of the CPU. And yes, they, um, they become a bit more hot and yes, they consume a bit more power. But if you want to get some more life out of your old machine here, that's worth it, right? So to make this video, I've been shopping. I uh, had a little quick uh, shopping spring in China and I bought three processors. I already made a little drawing for them. So one of them, this one is the 6600, Q6700, QX6800. There is also a QX6700. I did not get that one. But what these has in common is that they are quad cores, a core two quad core processors and they are overclockable so um, I'm gonna try these and see how they do but these two the 6600 and the 6700 are pretty cheap this one was over $50 the QX 6800 so it's gonna be exciting to see if that's worth the money 
my best guess is that it's probably not worth that much money to uh, to get the last little bit but that we will see but we will start up at the computer and see where we started i literally picked this computer out of the trash so what do we have we have the e5400 2 gigahertz and it has 4 gigs of ram awesome i did a bit of benchmarking before i started this and it benchmarks at 2454 at the cpu here so that's what we're gonna compare it to this is how it was when it was thrown out so we're gonna put in the processors without any ninja tricks we're gonna do some ninja tricks to them and um, try again so that's what i'm up to uh, i have done the ninja trick to this 8400 and nothing happens so we will um, i'll go install another little thing so that we can see the front side bus of it i was also recommended to use another little software to test so i ran this cinebench r15 and it came out with a number up here 165 qb so um, it um, it takes the the bottom score down here so all these cpus are way faster than that one so let's hope that we get a little bit up from the bottom of that when we get up to the faster cpus and we do ninja tricks on them okay i just downloaded and installed this cpu set if you search for that you get it and and it says that this is the processor the socket and the voltage and some more and down here it's the clock frequency of the processor right now it's running two gigahertz which um, this is a three gigahertz processor but it's right now it, the multiplier is probably running at six times speeds so if it, the multiplier goes up to nine times speed it will, will be running at three gigahertz and down here is the front side bus and that is the one that we're gonna see when we put in the q6600 that that will be 1066 ish it's not exactly but it will be close i have removed the cover and here is the cpu and this is the tiny cpu cooler gonna remove the power as well put that there and we're gonna take this off Here is the CPU. Can we focus on that? I think it's okay ish. And it says that the front side bus, oh, where is it? It's 1066 megahertz. So awesome. Let's put that in. Okay, the computer booted with the new CPU and it wants to reboot to actually use it. So we're gonna let it do that. I might have to mention that I'm using a Danish version of Windows 7. So up here is the Q6600 and it runs rather well actually. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz and it, it also has a multiplier between six and nine. So when it's uh, running and doing nothing, it's down to about 1600 and when it's running full speed it's of course running the 2.4 gigahertz and down here is the front side bus which is right now at 1063 and that's the one that we want to cheat actually i did just run uh, this test and got this result and i ran this test as well and got another result 240 cb which uh, made this processor not being the slowest one. We are probably not gonna beat the next one, but it's uh, we will probably get it up higher than this. So um, I just wanna try and start this again. Run, and we could just see the processor when it's doing something. Right now the multiplier has gone up to nine times, and we are running at almost 2.4 gigahertz. So cool, let's uh, do the ninja trick and see how that goes. So the ninja trick is to block one of these pins that um, the system board and the processor communicate which front side bus the processor should be running at. 
and the motherboard or system board will provide that front side bus to the CPU and if it does not get that signal it will think that this processor is a 1.333 gigahertz CPU so we're gonna block that signal with pieces of tape um, actually only one piece is needed the the one in the middle here is not the first one is not really needed but the one closest to the hole or the cutout should be the one that we need. I always get a lot smarter in the comments and people told me that I just um, taped over a voltage pin and I didn't need to do that. So we're just gonna try and put on the piece of tape at the very edge and I'm gonna try and show you how that looks. So to cover up the pins, I'm using a little bit of electric tape. And this is a rather good brand. Uh, I don't think it needs to be a good brand, but what I found is that I just kind of cut a little strip here. And you don't have to be super precise because I found that you can try and cut a super precise one and it will take you a long time. I think that might not be too bad. So you take that strip and I have the other processor laying here so I don't do any mistakes. So I just have to put it over that pin right there. Oh, that was too much. There. Ah! And yes, it wanna glue to your finger, so remove your finger carefully. Uh, I don't like that. Oh, that's good. And I, I put it on top of the heat sink because I don't wanna put this compound on again. And I'll take the scissor and I cut off the extra like that and check that it's still on there good so with that we will try and put it back in the computer and uh, power it up we can actually do that while you're watching there close that and put the heatsink back on so here is the result with that little bit of electric tape we can now see that the front side bus is 1328 that's as close as we get to 1.333 so that's not far off the frequency of the processor is right now it's toggling between 2 gigahertz here and sometimes it peaks out at 3 gigahertz so i'm gonna run the test results and be right back So we're looking at the very last of this benchmark, Cinebench R15. Let's see what the result will be. Uh, before we put on the tape, it was 240. Now it's 298. That's awesome. I'll check the next processor. So here is the Q6700. And you might be able to see here that the multiplier goes up to 10 times. And the frequency is 1.6 gigahertz and when it's doing something it goes up to the full 2.66 gigahertz and sometimes it just peaks there uh, I have done the measurements but let's uh, look at those last I'll take this one out and put on a piece of tape and see if it will run so I uh, just put on the tape and I've not removed the uh, the cooling adhesive here so I'm just gonna remove the leftover like that and we're gonna plug that back in cool so here is the q6700 but i have found that it has a problem let's start the performance test here still gathering information okay come on yeah it um fails it uh, crashes the computer so Apparently that CPU is not good for this overclocking method, so that's a bit sad. Um, ah. So having, having tested the Q6600 and the spasm result of the Q6700, it's time to check out the QX6800 series over here. We should do 2.93 GHz and I just put it in. And fortunately, this is the result. This processor is not compatible with this system. Damn. 
So here are the results of my testing. I was hoping to get some good results from these two CPUs, but they didn't really do anything. Both of these tests, they died when I had the tape on. So the Q6700, um, not able to overclock it with the tape method. If you have a motherboard where you can overclock it, I'm sure it will be good. And so goes with the QX6800. It's probably cool in an overclockable system. So even though we don't get the results I was hoping for, we do learn a lot of stuff. For example, this is the cheapest of these three CPUs and it does far the best. I got a result of 4169 compared to where we started. That's a really good increase in score. It's not quite double speed, but well, it's it's pretty awesome though. And also this Cinebench, there's quite an improvement. That's also almost twice as good. I will um, link this in the description. If you are to do this trick, um, don't go with the E-series. They're only dual core CPUs and they don't seem to do quite as good. The E5400 is one of the fastest. Actually, the, the E5500 here is um, probably the fastest one in the E-series. I'm not totally sure about that, but, but the E8400 is not a bad CPU for this system. It's actually one of the quicker in the Core 2 family. Uh, so this is actually a pretty high one. If we had one of the really low ones, we would have seen a performance gain of almost three times. So this was actually not a bad CPU to start with. And we kicked that up quite a bit. 4169 so um if you're gonna do this trick if you're gonna do this trick get the q6600 that's um that's the way to go these cpus um probably won't work if you have a nice motherboard that is overclockable you might be able to use these and also the qx6700 series would also be working there but in a system like that it seems that the the QX series would not work. Well, definitely not what I was hoping for. Uh, this um, QX6800, that cost $53. Um, I was hoping for a bit more. Unfortunately, it seems that it doesn't run in this system. And there will probably be a lot of systems where it will not run either. Q6700. That was about 18 and a half dollars. So that's not that bad for if you have a computer where it will run, it's okay-ish. But the Q6600, which was $17, well, it did far the best. If you're gonna try this Bissell mod, um, you should go with the Q6600. That's uh, cheapest and where you get the most performance so far haven't found anything else that will beat that with these cpus so um, well i do hope you like that please remember to give this video a thumbs up i didn't really get what i was hoping for but at least you don't have to waste your money on this so um, please give this video a like down there and probably don't waste your time on other cpus this is a really good bargain for 17 dollars it's just not worth it doing the ninja tricks to all the other cpus if um if that's the price. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Hopefully finding other good ninja tricks along the way. If you do know any ninja tricks that I should know about, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day. Bye bye.